Alright. How does this strike you, eh? Skeleton from the connect attracts your body. Come on, connect, don't fail me now. There we are. Now, it attracts every piece of your body, pretty much, and it attracts it pretty darn well. This is pretty cool, huh? Yeah? I think the most applications you can have for this would probably be head tracking. I mean, it does a decent job with hands and, you know, pretty decent with feet as well. But head tracking is where it's at with this. Now, let me show you how to do skeleton tracking with the Kinect. First of all, let me take a seat and let's get on to this here. Okay, the first thing you need to do is go to uh, the Kinect for Windows, and I'll put a link to this into the description, and download the SDK. When you download the SDK, it usually puts it somewhere about, let's see, C Drive, Program Files, um, Microsoft SDKs, Kinect, oops, back up a little uh, version 1.5, this might be a later version by now, although it should be relatively the same. And there's this DLL file right here, the Microsoft Kinect.dll. And it's only 143 kilobytes, super small. Okay, now here's our basic program. This thing is empty. So let's add the Kinect ability to it. The Kinect isn't actually built in with Visual Basic, so we got to add it first. The first thing we need to do is go to our object browser. So let's go to View and then Object Browser. And we got to add it to our custom component set. So really it doesn't have to be in custom component set. That's where I just like to be. Hit the dot 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 and remove whatever else I got going in there. And we now we got to find it again. C drive, program files, Microsoft SDKs, connect 1.5, assemblies, and this guy. Also while we're here, Let's right click this guy and hit copy. So now let's add it to our custom component set. Hit OK. There it is, the connect. And then right here, this button, add it to our current project. OK, so we got it added. Excellent. Now, next thing we need to do is come over here to our solution explorer. Right click this guy and hit paste. That's why we hit copy earlier. Paste. And it adds the DLL to our assembly. Now click this, come down here to copy to output directory. Uh, and instead of do not copy, we want copy if newer. This puts it in with our program. So once our copy is, or once our program is uh, generated, it brings it in with it. Else, if it's not there, it's not going to work. So that needs to be done. Okay, let's start working on our program now. So here's our basic regular starter program. Let's open this up a little bit bigger. We're going to need two things. First thing is a pitcher box. As always, it seems everything I do is a pitcher box. And we want this guy to be a 640 by 480 size. And then we're also going to need a timer. So double click that, timer. And the timer properties are, we want the enable to be always true. So that's always running. You know, 100 millisecond intervals, just fine. So now let's go to our code. And we can get there by uh, right clicking in our program, but not on the box here. Well, we can. We can hit there, too. So here's our code. Absolutely nothing. So what you're going to need to do is I have the description uh, has a link to the code and you'll be able to grab all this. So I'm just going to copy and paste right now into there. Okay. So there we are. And so let's go over the code just so this all makes sense to you. First thing you do is import uh, Microsoft.connect. That'll take all the uh, connect lingo and put it into the program lingo so it knows what the crap we're talking about when we're referencing stuff like connect sensor, color image frame, and skeleton frame. Our program's not going to know what that is unless we do the import. Going down, we are defining our defining kins as a connect, uh, connect sensor, the images as a color image frame, and the skeletons as a skeleton frame. Then we define a uh, bitmap, an image to draw to, and then a graphics to draw with. All right, that's the defining portion. Now, form load. Uh, before I get into the events here, let me uh, just back up here and say that handles. Uh, I've been noticing a lot of issues people have been having with my programs because they're missing handles. 
uh, if you copy and paste code and that particular thing does not exist, it will not work for you. Um, for instance here, if I did not have a timer here and I copied and pasted this code, it would not, it would actually remove handles timer one tick if there were no timer one. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, always look on your event uh, headers here to make sure there's a handles in there. Unless it's something that's being called special. Now I have a couple of those in this one and I'll get to that in a minute. So let's go back to our form load. In the form load, the first thing we're going to do, and I, I kind of go over this in previous uh, videos on how to connect to the connect. Huh. Anyhow, this chunk of code here is looking for a sensor and defining kins as that sensor that it finds. So that defines what the connect sensor is, the kins. Uh, the next thing we do is we enable the color stream and then we enable the skeleton stream and then we add handlers for when the connect says I have a, a color stream and I have a skeleton stream. And then we start the connect. All right. And then next we do the skeleton tracking mode, default or seated. What you saw earlier was default, and that includes head, arms, legs, everything. If you just have seated, it just basically includes head and arms. So let's just leave that on default for right now. And then I have this, uh, I, de I define the elevation angle as negative 10 because that allows, since I have my scale, my uh, connect mounted pretty high, that points it down towards me. Uh, the maximum is about 27, the minimum is negative 27, and the interesting about this thing is, is I've noticed if I move it with my hand while it's trying to go to a new angle, it like moves in relative to my hand. So I think there's some sort of level sensor in there too, which is pretty cool. But on a flat surface, negative 10 looks down at me. So this is a hard-coded thing I put in. You can change this to whatever you need. Probably zero will work better for you. So let me just put a note in there. Zero more likely. Like spell. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now let's get on to this portion here. Remember how I said we were adding, adding, adding handlers for when the color streamer is ready and the skeleton streamer is ready? Uh, the address of color ready is right here and the skeleton ready is right here. And the way this works is the connect sensor dumps in the frame into these color and skeleton frames to be used later. And I don't want to call up um, these um, big methods that I have here every time these things come in. I want to do those on a timed interval so there's less processing going on at one moment. So what I do simply what I do is I just take the uh, frame that it returns this E dot open color image frame I dump that into images for the color stuff and then skeleton its E has the open skeleton frame and I dump that into skeletons. So with that handled now images and skeletons is now defined. So the next portion is a color stream. I'm pretty sure I go over this in a previous uh, video once again. But it's basically I'm taking all the uh, data from the Kinex color camera and dumping it into a 640 by 40 bitmap. Now this chunk of code looks a little scary. Uh, however, this is uh, another piece of code I already have developed called a uh, fast bitmap rendering, which I also have another video of. But basically what it does is it breaks out the uh, the image into a really fast rendering thing and it dumps it into um, the pixels. So anyways, uh, how this does is it uh, has the images, uh, here we are, images. Images, if you recall, is the thing copied from the color frame and that dumps into pixels, which is a, an array of bytes for the length of the pixel data length. And I'm trying to make this short because this is just too much information. It dumps into a string or a long array of bytes. And then that bytes is segmented out and then put into the image through here and then dumped into there. And through the Marshall Interop services, it puts it into a bitmap. I know it's messy, but it's, it's the best way to do it. But again, handled in a different thing. The skeleton method, which is called, by the way, I should have gone over this first. Once the timer ticks here, I call the color method, which draws the, uh, the picture you see of me in my room. And I call the skeleton method. And then I dump this uh, the picture that it generates both these two things 
into the pitcher box. Okay, so the skeleton method here is what I really want to get to because the skeleton is what this video is about. So the skeleton method, which is called from the timer, um, so I'm defining uh, skeletons as skeleton. I know that's odd, but anyways, let's break this down as best as I can and bear with me. Uh, if skeletons, which is our back up here, if you remember this guy, our skeleton frame that the connect returns is not nothing, means it found something, then uh, skeletons equals uh, a new array of, or actually just equals a new skeleton. Skeletons, I guess. I mean, it's, it's odd here how this is working, but um, it's taking from a frame of skeletons and dumping it into uh, a new form of data type, which is skeleton. And so it has to copy the skeleton data from the skeleton frame to the skeleton's uh, data format. Now you can either care about this or not. You can copy and paste it or learn more. If you want to learn more, I don't know. So it's up to you. Anyhow, let's define a pen real nice and easy. It's lime green, it's three pixels wide. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so if it found any skeletons at all, which means the length is not zero, then for each skeleton, because it actually will pick up more than one skeleton, uh, for each skeleton and skeletons, then we have all of these things here. Now this looks huge, but don't worry, this is easy. The shoulder right, we have to define these first and then draw two points between them. So this is the point that we have to draw. And it's a crazy long line here because what you have to do to get the skeleton point before you can use the skeleton point is address it against the depth image. So let's go through this crazy math, math method here. The shoulder right as defines a depth image point equals the kin's map skeleton point to depth scale joints joint type shoulder right and this is where you define the point you want and all of them are in there so you can by backspace this I can show you all the points are in there and I've already written all the code for all of them so you actually don't need to uh, do anything so I'll put that back its position against the depth image format of a 640 by 480 image. And this will return to you an X, Y, and a Z. If I backspace on this, we have X, Y, oh, and no Z. Huh, I guess I lied, sorry. X, Y, but that's really all we care about right now. Maybe there's a Z in there somewhere. I could have swore there was. Hmm, oh, depth, <laughs> there it is, that's why. It, they call it depth. All right, I didn't lie, I just mixed up the truth. So anyways, uh, the right arm here draws the hand right, wrist right, elbow right, and shoulder right. And then I draw lines using the graphics that I defined way up the top here. And I draw a line using my pen, just that three pixel wide green line, using the point shoulder right, X and Y, and elbow right X and Y. This draws a line. Now it's just that simple. So the rest of them are all drawn based off the same principle between elbow and wrist and then wrist and hand. Now do the same for the left arm. The right leg goes for hip right to knee right, then knee right to ankle right, then ankle right to foot right. And then the left leg and the body is where the rest of it all gets put together where we have head. Uh, the center of the shoulders which is a a point, spine and hip center, and then I put the head to the shoulders and so forth and so forth, and finally I connect uh, the hip center to the hip right and the hip left. And I also put the uh, shoulders to the shoulder center. That combines them all together. All right, confusing enough for you? I hope not. I hope that was simple enough. So anyways, let me just do one more thing here to show you. Let's put this to seated. Turn my program on one more time. Back up. There we have it. Now, the best way I found for to find you is just to push your arms up. Now, because it's seated, it doesn't find the other points. Now, see, this isn't entirely the best, but it, I think for head tracking, it seems to be pretty reliable. So, head's your best bet. Now, if you're going to do some head tracking thing, this would be awesome for that. 
I think that's what most Kinect games do. Uh, I mean, some use their arms as well, but I, f I find the arms to be kind of reliable, kind of not. And you can see it's tracking pretty well, but as I turn around, and it loses it. And there it found it again. As I turn, uh, I get some occlusion here, which means stuff is in the way of stuff, and it has to refine it all, and there we are. So this is Connect, Connect, connect there we go, Connect with Skeleton stuff. So, hope you enjoy that. Baby's starting to cry. Gotta go. Have fun with that.